Good morning, good morning, welcome to day one of our 21 day journey. Um, glory to God, that means we are about three weeks away from content, but this fast is not for the conference. The fast is conference. The fast is not for the boot camp, it is for God, we've literally started um, content. So this is the first day of content, so to speak. And obviously culminating with our encounter in person uh, with one another, but with the Lord as well. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you are not going to be in person at content, there's only one option, which is an in person at content, you're still very much welcome to join us in this three weeks because again, the fast is not um, for content. The fast is unto the Lord. And so I believe that this will be a blessing to everyone in Jesus' name. Glory to the most high God. Just um, a few, because I want to make sure that when we pray, we just keep going. Just going to do some administrative things. So administratively, we're going to be praying every day for the next three weeks, 5 a.m. It's not new for those of you that journey with a Luther. You know, we maintain our 5 a.m. altar by the grace of God um, every day <laughs> to the glory of God. Um, I think the only day we didn't do is New Year's Day. I think we took a break New Year's Day because we did night vigil and stuff and the second, but usually we're here. So that doesn't change anyway, but our emphasis this next three weeks will be a little bit different to what um, we have been doing. Our emphasis um, is consecrating ourselves unto the Lord. Um, and so we're on this fast today being day one of the fast um, and we will be fasting the timings of the fast is the beginning of the day which is midnight um, and till six uh, but you can break earlier you can break at three um, if you are on medication for any reason um, you know, speak to your doctors, but also I believe for your healing. One of the th things we find is when we wait on God and when we fast, uh, the one of the benefits or the blessings of waiting on the Lord is healing. So um, expect healing in this uh, next three weeks, uh, healing of your physical body, healing of your mind, healing. Uh, anywhere there is a sickness, a dis-ease, whether it's in your spirit, in your soul, or in your body, as you put a focus on God, you will begin to know the balm of Gilead. You will begin to see the things that were out of order come back into alignment in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. But those are secondary. Those are the secondary blessings the primary thing you will be witnessing in this fast is that you are more open to the Lord. You will know a nearness. One of the goals of consecration is a deepening communion with the Lord. One of the goals of consecration is a deepening communion with the Lord. And so in this next three weeks, begin to get ready to see yourself awakened in your spirit, man, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will begin to know the nearness of God in a different dimension, in a deeper way. In the name of the Lord Jesus, get ready for encounters with Abba. Encounters with Abba. Uh, there will be increase of dreams, of visions. There will be increase. You also get ready for that. Um, so we are fasting. Um, fasting for us is abstaining from food uh, it is a partial fast so you can drink we um, encourage you to stay away from caffeinated drinks um, and 
acidic drinks because you're you have a less food intake you want to stay away from anything that is acidic and you want to stay away from anything that is caffeinated or fizzy that's not going to be good for your stomach um so water is a good friend um coconut water is a good friend um during a fast uh what else is a good friend uh what's that one i have oat drink oat milk it's oat drink those are good friends they would help you in your fast um just so you don't hurt your the the lining of your stomach um what else is it social media now in the soul detox we tell you no social media this is not so detox but it is a detox so we encourage you not to indulge in social media or in entertainment so because you're not eating your flesh is going to want to compensate how many of you have ever experienced that where because you're not eating you want to drown okay grace is with me so you're gonna have to exercise discipline to um i encourage you to hear yeah, nina's right there too with me i encourage you to um stay away from uh, secular music if you listen to it on a normal day stay away from that uh, stay away from and uh, movies and uh tv shows what you can do um should you want to is you can watch the christian alternatives but even those you have to be careful that you're not giving yourself a placebo drug it's okay to be bored in god it's okay can i tell you that can you hear it it is okay for you to sit down in your room and stare at the walls for a minute and be like I really want to go scroll on social media right now but tell yourself it's okay you're gonna be all right tell your soul you're you're on a timeout from all that junk okay it would it take a minute to get to, to get used to it but you will and you begin to find rest in god and you begin to find joy in god and you will not feel like you need to um appease your soul with something outside of God. I pray that one of the things that will happen to you is that you will find rest in God. You will find entertainment. You will find joy. You will find you will find him to be more than enough in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, the Bible says he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. One thing you should note is everybody starts their journey on the same day but our experiences are different some people it's at the beginning of the fast that is more challenging some people it's the middle some people it's the end some people start the fast and straight away they are encountering god and different things while some people god's like i i need to do a little bit more to get you to that place and that's okay all right so don't um you're going to hear testimonies by the grace of God. Don't compare your journey with somebody else's. Just know that the goosebumps, the physical goosebumps is not your goal. Okay? Physical goosebumps is not your goal. Other people's encounters is not your goal. He is the goal. We do this for him. The Lord spoke to me uh, is it a month now, Abba? A while ago, he said, this fast is not for content. This fast is me calling my children together so that they can be positioned to encounter me, to know me. And so we do that. Please do me a favor and turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 19 as we begin our journey. Exodus chapter 19. You are awesome in all of your ways. Father, we thank you this morning. You are great and greatly to be praised. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, for waking us up. Thank you for your breath in our lungs. Thank you, Jesus, for such a time as this, that you will call us out from the world, calling us out from among them to consecrate ourselves to you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. We thank you for the privilege of drawing close to you. We thank you, Jesus, for the response in the heart of your people. Your word says, seek my face. And we say in response, your face, O God, shall we seek. Be thou exalted and be thou magnified. Would you help your children? Help us, God. Help us to fulfill your intention. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Exodus chapter 19. And we will go from. From verse one. Let's do from verse one. There is an emphasis somewhere, but we'll go from verse one. Thank you, Dr. Ruth. You are worthy, Jesus. Exodus 19 from verse one. I'm reading the ESV. On the third new moon after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came to the, into the wilderness of Sinai. They set out from Rephidim and came to the wilderness of Sinai, and they camped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord God called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possessions among all people. For all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and may also believe you forever. When Moses told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all people. And you shall set limits for the people all around. We, we, may God bless the reading of his word. God had an intention for the children of Israel beyond them being delivered from Egypt, from their oppression. God's goal was to bring his people to himself. He said to Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. Your deliverance, my God, your deliverance from whatever it is that is oppressing you is not just for you to be free. It's not just for your relief. It is to bring you to the place where you worship the only God, where you worship Yahweh. He said to Pharaoh, do you remember him saying that to Pharaoh? It's not in this one that we just read. He says, let my people go that they may worship me. Hey, Kayara Basatai. Manturi, baby. Exodus chapter 10. Verse 3. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews. How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may worship me. Let my people go that they may worship me. 
We've preached deliverance to make it sound like God just wants you to deliver it for you. And he loves you. And yes, he doesn't want you to be oppressed. But the ultimate goal of deliverance is not just to take you out of something, but to deliver you into something else. <laughs> the Bible says he has delivered us. He has delivered us from darkness. He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, my God, and unto his dear son. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. God has rescued us from the power of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his son whom he loves. Your deliverance is not just to take you out of something, but to bring you into God. Your deliverance is incomplete if you're just taken out of something and you're not delivered into something else, into God's will. He, you're not just brought out of something to, that oppresses you. He's also bringing you into the place where you can worship him. Let my people go that they may worship. In this 21 day journey, whatever it is that has been oppressing you, whatever it is that has been exalting itself as God in your life, whatever it is that has been uh, a, an issue in the area of your consecration, anything disturbing your, your balance, your spirit, your soul, your body. I believe God for you, that you will be delivered out of it but the, 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 the key, the sign of your deliverance will be that you will begin to see yourself in a place of worship, in a place of surrender to God, in a place where worship is not just something that you do on a Sunday, but be the life that you live. Let my people go that they may serve me, that they may worship me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, your communion with God will be restored in the name of the Lord Jesus, but not restored to what it was, but you will come into a place of divine alignment you will come into a place of a greater intimacy with god in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus but this is it he said to them he said to moses tell the people to consecrate myself because i'm coming down god is a holy god and we must prepare and position ourselves to encounter him jesus after his resurrection and he spent uh, 40 days uh, telling them about the things of the kingdom. But he tells them, you see, there is something that needs to happen to you. So you're going to have to tarry in Jerusalem. You need to wait. You need to wait. You need to wait. You need to wait. And they waited the first day. Nothing happened. The Bible says he said to them, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. But he tells them that they need to wait. And they wait the second day and nothing happens but they are waiting is not passive they are in prayer they are in prayer they are lifting up their voice to god in prayer together and the third day and the fourth day and the fifth day and the sixth day nothing happened if you read the book of first corinthians you will see that apostle paul tells us that some people that heard the instruction to wait on god actually left before the pentecost happened before the outpouring of the spirit of god on the pentecost to cost them. The Bible lets me know. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, I'm challenging you in this 21 days not to give up the first week, to push beyond your flesh, to push beyond you what is comfortable, to not get sidetracked because you think nothing is happening. I'm telling you that sometimes you don't see things happening on the surface, but God says, I am the rewarder of those that diligently seek me that means um, that you got to keep showing up consistently because you know he is the one that will reward your diligence and you may not see anything on the first day on the second day but trust uh, that the bible says uh, he is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him so you got to commit to being diligent in this three weeks but even beyond the three weeks. 
the Bible says this, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there came in the sound like a, a surraba, the mighty rushing wind and they encounter god why because they were positioned they were positioned to encounter god don't get me wrong there are some times where god will interrupt your day you were not even thinking about it and god will give you an encounter there are someone like apostle paul who was saul on the road of damascus he wasn't thinking about a god encounter but god met him so there are moments like that but there are also moments where the bible says seek me there are times that god will come for you and there are times where god is saying no seek me in the book of amos chapter 5 the bible tells me that God says, seek me and you shall live. There is a band, a seeking of God that will bring you into real life, that will bring you into a place where you are actually alive. For some of you, you've been existing. The last time you really sought the Lord was at the beginning of the year, but somehow your journey through 2023 has caused you to be blunt. As you turn your face over to consecrate to God, you will know the God who is near, you will know Jehovah Shammah. The Lord himself will make his presence known to you. Listen, there's a difference between the omnipresence of God and the manifest presence of God. In this 21 days, I'm believing God as you turn your face to him, as you turn to seek him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. As you worship him with fasting, as you minister unto God, you will know Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is there. In these three weeks, I'm believing God that each one of us will have a personal revival. There shall be an awakening. Your people have come to seek your face. And you have not asked us to seek you in vain. So the consecration that you're going through in these three weeks is to draw you to the Lord. Joshua chapter 3. Do you agree with me? If you agree, type Amen. If you believe for this type, amen. Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3 from verse 1, the Bible says this. Then Joshua rose early in the morning and set out from Shittim. And they came to the Jordan, he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And at the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priest, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about two. 200 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord shall do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on before the people. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. Consecration prepares you to see wonders. Consecration prepares you to see wonders. We are consecrating ourselves in these three weeks because we want to see him. Consecration is not time bound. I need to make that known. This is, we're just intensifying our consecration. You should live a consecrated life to the Lord. Consecration is the conscious surrender of everything we are and have to Yahweh. 
Consecration is the conscious surrender. It is our response to God. The conscious surrender of everything we are and have to Yahweh in response, in the response of gratitude to everything that we've received from him. For our redemption, for example, your response to the redemption you have in Christ is a life consecrated to God. You see that in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, that word therefore speaks a lot. It means based on everything you've read thus far. Therefore, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are you with me? That is speaking of a life consecrated unto God. It is consistently, constantly, consciously submitting to the sovereign rule of God over your lives. It is consciously, consistently, constantly submitting to the sovereign rule of God. Sometimes we know him as savior, but we don't know him as Lord. And until you know him as Lord, you haven't really known the Lord. He's not just savior, he is Lord. He is Lord. It is keeping, consecration is keeping ourselves from sin to lay hold of the grace of God. One of the things you will find in this time is an increase of your joy. Because in Hebrews chapter one, verse nine, we are told, is it one? Mm, let me make sure. We are told, because you loved righteousness, I anoint you with the oil of joy. Let me just get my bearings right. Yes. Hebrews chapter one, verse nine, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness before your companions. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in these three weeks, we begin to see a refining of our appetite in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, that we will love what he loves and hate what he hates in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we will love righteousness and hate unrighteousness uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and because of an alignment in our appetite, uh, you receive the oil of gladness uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, consecration is how you go the distance with God is how you go the distance with God. Our race in life is not a sprint. Our journey with God is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Consecration is how you keep in pace. Consecration is how you keep the pace. It is the act of getting lost in God. <laughs> getting lost in God. And he deserves it. He deserves it. You consecrate because he is your creator. He is your creator. <laughs> he's the one that redeemed you by the blood. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 that he's redeemed us. Redeemed us by his blood. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You have been bought with a price. Been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. So you belong to him. You don't belong to the world. You don't belong to yourself, you belong to Abba. And so we consecrate ourselves to him. Consecration is a death to self. In this journey, the next three weeks, four for those of you that physically are content, sure, the enemy is defeated out of your lives already. Sure, you're going to enforce your victory over the enemy. But paramount to that is the death to yourself. Your biggest enemy is yourself, your flesh. I know. In the generation of self-love, you don't, you gotta be careful that you don't self-love to the point 
that you elevate your enemy, your enemy above God. <laughs> the enemy of this fast that you want to do is your appetite. What the enemy will do, what he will try is only use your own desire to entice you. And so if you defeat yourself, if you wean your soul, as scripture tells us to do, then you already have victory over the enemy. You can enforce that victory over the enemy. So in this fast, we are putting our body under. We are dying to self. Consecration, the dying to self is the springboard for productivity, for spiritual productivity. How many of you know that after you get past the hunger pangs in a fast, you're a lot more productive? Your mind is clearer. You get to a place where your mind is like, whoo, clear. John chapter 12, verse 24. Except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. John 12, verse 24. We're just laying some groundwork. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It bears much fruit fruit it bears much fruit and believe in God that you will stay in pace with God enough for you to die to self so that you can bear much fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 <laughs> says this I've been crucified with Christ, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. May you not nullify the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Consecration is you renouncing the lordship of Satan and self. It's a total surrender of your spirit, soul, and body. And all that those three components of you encompass of, you are renouncing the lordship of Satan, of self. It is a total surrender of your spirit, soul, and body, your ambitions, your desires, your assets, surrendering it all to Abba, surrendering it all to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It will transform you to being a living expression of God. And that's what mirrors is about. Has anybody been able to figure, I wonder how you guys were able to book in to come to a a retreat, a boot camp called Mirrors. <laughs> I am curious because we didn't even give you no explanation. We just wrote Mirrors and you're coming. I said, whoa. But that's it though. When God called this theme Mirrors to me, I said, Abba, what you mean? mirrors and at first i i was looking at mirrors and it does apply as the word you know the bible says in the book of james he that hears the word and forgets it is like a man that looks at his image in the mirror and forgets what it looks like so that's that's cool however the more i journeyed with god with that theme and just studying it god said no I'm calling on you as my mirror. God created man in his image. We are called to mirror God. So this is not 
whether you're looking at the word and just seeing God, the question is, how clear is God's image being reflected through you? A mirror does not point to itself. A mirror points away from itself. A mirror reflects the image that it's facing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. A mirror reflects the image that it's facing. Question. Can God see his image through you? How much of God is being seen in you and through you? That's what this is about. First, we're going to be consecrating. Question for you. Have you ever looked in a dirty mirror? Have you ever looked in a dirty mirror? What does, the, what does your image look like in that dirty mirror? Can you see well? Talk to me. Can you see well? If you ever looked at a dirty mirror, you can't see well. The image is not reflecting well. And right now, for some of us, God is saying, my image has been distorted because you are a dirty mirror. There's too much junk on you. You've covered the image of God. You've smeared the image of God. I don't look like that. <laughs> I don't look like that. Where did you get that from? I don't, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Genesis tells us that God made man in his image. God made us in his image. We are to mirror him. We are to mirror him. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But when a mirror turns away from the image that it's meant to reflect, it begins to, it begins to imitate others. Did you not hear? Be ye imitators of God, mirror God, mirror God, mirror God. But somehow we began to mirror our idols. Somehow we began to mirror the world around us. Somehow we began to mirror everything else outside from God. The church is to mirror Christ. We are mirroring a lot of other things. <laughs> and God says, I want to clean up the mirrors. I want to clean up the mirrors. I'm going to clean up the mirrors. Maribeke surra baba kande ribeko shkatai merunta libri anai. If you, in case you wondered what this is about, God wants His image restored. God wants to restore his image. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, please. I hope you have your Bibles. Romans chapter 8. Anyone feeling something in their heart? Is the Lord already turning your heart? Are you hearing the word of the Lord? Good. Do yourself a favor and you show up into this place. Engage. Be an active. Engage. Don't get in your bed. Don't lie in your bed and turn your lie and think you're going to be okay. You're not going to be all right. Sleep will come for you. Romans chapter 8. Let's go all the way to twenty 
six. The word of the Lord says, likewise, the spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Those he foreknew, he predestined. If you want to know what your destiny is, your destiny is to be conformed to the image of his son. Romans 12 tells us, do not be conformed to the world. So then what is it? You and I are meant to be conformed to the image of his son, of the Christ. We're meant to look like Jesus. The Bible says that when those in Antioch saw the believers in Antioch, they called them Christians. They recognized that they had been with God. They didn't have to say they were Christians. The way they lived, the way they operated, the way they were, showed them to be believers. And so this morning, in case you wondered what you signed up to, you signed up for your mirrors to be cleaned, for your life to be cleaned, so that the image of God will stop being hidden. So that the image of God through you can be revealed. The Bible says that you were made in the image of God. Something, a, a theological concept called Imago Dei, made in the image of God. In the image of God. In the image of God. Um, and so we're journeying this three weeks. I'll be leading in, in prayer for a little bit. Members of the team will be leading in prayer. By the grace of God, every morning, someone will have be on this altar. There will be a time where I will pull back personally. Um, I'll be in prayer, but I will not be leading because I'm going to have to get ready to see some of you in person. But the altar will keep going. Please make sure in these three weeks, you don't just okay, Abba, pray at 5 a.m. Your fast is incomplete if you don't spend time with the Lord. So a good tip is to replace every time you're meant to eat, replace it with a time of fellowship with God, whether you're worshiping, whether you're meditating on scripture, whether you're praying. So whatever time you normally have breakfast, have breakfast in the word or in summer. Don't just work. That's another thing. Don't while away the time, wind away the time um, by indulging in your work either. Go for your lunch break. Take lunch. Just say, I'm fasting. I don't need a lunch. No, you need a lunch. You need a lunch. Your lunch is just going to be the word. I have food you know not of. Okay. Go get the word and sit down at where you, you know, somewhere, go to a place where you consecrate. That's a good tip. If you're working from home, consecrate a place in your house where you meet with God. That that's, whenever I go there, that's the place I'm encountering God. That's where I'm going to be praying. If you're in the office, find a room in your office space or go to the park or for a walk. Just make sure you don't 
try and overcome the hunger feeling by just working through it. You know, spend time with Abba. Make sure you don't just pray with us. Make sure you're spending time alone with God. And if you get into the presence of God and you don't know what to say, say, God, I don't know what to say, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, God. Make sure you spend time with Abba. Are we clear on our journey? Are we clear? All right. I see one person with the heart saying yes. Anybody else? Awesome. Glory to God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When this is restored, this is a key to many things. This is a key to many things in your life. And you will, will begin to see it as we go. For those of you at Contend, you, you know you have different ministers coming to minister. We haven't told them what to say to you. We haven't told them what to preach. We haven't told them. And they're not even here to hear this, okay? So we're open to the Spirit of God. We're open to receiving that which God would upload into them to come download um, for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. But as it pertains to what the purpose of this year's encounter is, that's good. We've journeyed for a couple of years. We did Behold Your God. What was the other one, team? Do you remember it? Behold Your God last year. What was last year's one? Who remembers? It feels like a lifetime ago. Marvel. Ah, yes. Rediscovering the kingdom. Marvel. Yes. And now God is getting into the nitty gritty of us and saying, hey, mirror, mirror, mirror. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Says the Lord. And so this morning we're going to commit this next three weeks into God's hands. We do not know how we ought to pray, but the spirit of God helps us. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit for help this morning. For the next three, four weeks, help me, God. Help me, Lord Jesus. I am committed to this journey with you, but I need your help. Help me, God. I can't do this by myself. Help me, God. Help me, God. Mm -hmm. I want you to ask the Lord for help. Spirit of the living God, the spirit of grace and supplication. We come to consecrate ourselves to you, God. We ask for your help. I ask for everyone that is journeying with us, those that are going to be at content and those that are not at content, but they're doing this three weeks, my God. Lord Jesus, I ask for help. Lord Jesus, I ask for your help. Help us to wait on you. Help us not just to uh, abstain from food, but help us to feast in you. Help us to feast on you. Help us, my Korababaka, to commune with you, my God. Help us to turn our hearts to you. Help us to turn our minds to you. Help us even to turn our appetite, our stomachs to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I ask for your help, Holy Spirit, to fast in a way that is pleasing to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We consecrate, my God, the next three weeks and four weeks to you. The Lord Jesus it will be a time of surrender that you will consecrate our spirit soul and body that god you will purge out of us anything that is covering your glory in our lives anything that is covering your image in our lives 
My God, I ask for help. Help to put our bodies under. Spirit of the living God, we consecrate the next oh god three weeks and four weeks unto you my god we sanctify them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit we declare god that this is an altar consecrated unto you my god that 5 a.m we will encounter you Father, the grace to put our bodies under. The grace to allow you to do your work in us. My God, help us not to hide any parts of ourselves. Help us not to hide any parts of ourselves. That we will expose every part to your light. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Ekanda Rabba Baba Kurara, Ina Mama Makasian Narada, Erebebe Kurraba, help your children, my God, Irabba Baba, the Lord Jesus, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Manteke Bacante Likatoi, Erabba Kurraba, Ina Nana Makasanda, Father, help us, Irabba Baba, to submit our appetite to you. Matoko Sata, help us to die to self, help us to die throne and renounce satan and self and selfish ambitions help us to live a life surrendered help us to surrender father even the areas you bring to our remembrance, the areas, oh God, you you chastise us on, the areas you correct us on, the areas, Mandere, that we may not think is a problem, but it's not in line with your will. Help us to obey you, God. My God, I pray for your people. Help. Help us, O oh God, to find rest in you. Spirit of the living God, in Amasunda, Irebe Kundaria by Eraba Bacande, Manda Rababaca de Madoca de Briando, Eriba Babacandore, help us, O God, help us to repent, Mandore Becanda, of anything that is not of you, help us, O God, Ida Babacanda, to allow you to break us, to allow you, Makasura, to make us contrite, Antaya Kai, or Re Ida by Irababando, Enda Bakura, Errababa, come like a refiner's fire, Anda Bakando Kunda Dikai, Enda Bababakai, help us to submit to this process in you, God. Ina Manda dia Bakande Riakaya, Erriacador Rababacade, Enda Babacanda die, Father, Ikanda Rabai, Rebecendoya, Isatoya, Isatoya, Inanantora, Erandiakai, Irra. We ask for your help, Holy One, that we consecrate ourselves so we can see you as you are. Consecrate ourselves so we can behold you. Consecrate ourselves. Irama mamandari akai, orrebe be kurra baba. Irama mandari arra baba. Irrebe be kurra baba. Kurri arra bakandor. Esurra baba baba kiara. I hope you're praying for the help of the Holy Spirit. Inama makasina rara. Inama mama kador. Eskadali baba baba. We ask for your help in the place of prayer. Help to study your word. Help to eat of you. Makusha kai e bakonda i arande lebra do. Help to turn to you, Spirit of God. Rarando, irrebebe kender ya baba, irrebebe kurra baba. Ina mama makusende, irrebebe kaskenda. 
Urrababakande, Merebeke, Masurai, Errababai, Errebekura, Iskatalibai, Masokote, Mesekete, Irrababa, Errebekando, Errabababa, Ikandaraba, Irrabababa Kurraba, Irrebekura Baba Kurra Baba Kashkai. Help us, O God. Ira mamando robo koshira ba, era bebe kesura baba. Help us, O God, that we will not be like Esau, ha, huh? Father. We will not be like Esau, who for a piece of bread sold his birthright. Father, mande kesh kanara ba. There are things, O God, you are asking us to do, even in this fast, in order for us to access our birthright in you. Mata ya katalera, ah, that's good. Ira baba. The Bible tells me, in order for Jacob to be able to get the blessing. After he had swindled his brother, his mother had to put us the, the skin. In of, a, of an animal on him because Esau was hairier than him. So she had to put on him so that when his father, who was dimly blind, Marava touched him, he could feel like he was speaking to Esau. There was something about the access to the blessing that was contingent on the image. Did you hear that? There was something about the access that is contingent on the image. There are some things in God you will not be able to access because it is contingent on his image. Are you with me? Are you with me? Father, help us, O God, to rediscover the image of God, the likeness of God, in the name of Jesus, that we will break off every wrong projection of our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask for your help, my God. Even the things that seem like they were us, but were not us. Help us, oh God, to shake them off. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Psalm 24. And then I'll let you go. Remember the scriptures throughout the day. If any members of the team have the scriptures down, we put it on the group chat so you have them to pray with. Dr. Ruth, you got it? Let me know. Rebebe surrababa. E kanto rebe kurraba. Inamaka surraba. We have the recording that we can also give to you so that um, you're able to listen back and pray more in your own time. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend? Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Did you see that? Who, who identity of, who are the people who will be able to ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will be able to stand? Not just ascend, but also stand. It says, he that has clean hands, your identity will grant you access. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false. How do you lift up your soul to what is false? What are you digesting? What are you meditating on? What are you allowing your soul to process that is poisonous to it? Who does not lift up his soul to what is fault, nor swears deceitfully. What are you using your mouth to do? That person is the one will, that will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. 
So your access to those, your access to those things is in when you seek the Lord, who seek the face of God, of the God of Jacob. And then when you do that, when you get access, you're able to say, lift up your heads, O gates. This thing will not just restore your identity. It won't just bring the blessing upon your life. It would also restore your authority. You're able to exercise authority. God made man in his image, in his likeness. And God blessed them. God, God didn't just bless them as them god blessed his image are you with me the blessing is on his image i don't think you're ready i don't know if you're ready did you hear that the blessing was on his image god blessed them they were in his image god bless them did you not read that whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world it is the the authority the 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 blessing is in the image god blessed them and said to them be fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion father as you restore us as into the image of your dear son may we operate in the blessing may we operate in the authority in the name of the lord jesus father help us not to be merciful to our sin. Yeah, help us not to be merciful to our sins. Help us to come to the point when we no longer tolerate that which you do not tolerate. The Lord Jesus, in this journey, we will not make excuses for the things you show in us that are not in alignment. We will not excuse it because of the things we've been through. But Lord Jesus, we will stretch for our sword and uproot the things you show us, O oh God, that we may be restored back into the image of God. We approach the throne of grace. We obtain mercy for ourselves. But Lord Jesus, help us to hate what you hate, love what you love. Help us not to make excuses or provision for the flesh. Oh God, give us grace in order to apply this to our lives. For the one who the enemy is whispering to, saying, you can't do this. We rebuke the voice of the strange man. We rebuke the voice of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will help you. Even when you're hungry, the Lord will help you. <laughs> help us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for calling us back to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. And Amen. And amen. Glory to the Most High God. Glory to the Most High God. We're back tomorrow morning. We started the engine today. We're back corporately tomorrow tomorrow at 5 a.m. But make sure God sees you throughout the day. Okay. God bless you. Have a great day.